choice as to whether they wanted their children to go to public school or if they wanted their children to be homeschooled. And this is prior to Tamaray. This is many years prior to Tamaray. And if you look at the reality is that all those people that was raised, say, back in the Ansar Allah days up until, to me, there were guidelines and laws and restrictions and respect levels and all of that that was laid. And none of those people are getting up saying, oh, he did this to us, or this is wrong, or we were unhappy with our nation. You know? It's a very small group. You cannot tell me that a person who's given 30-some-odd years of their life raising people, you know, all of a sudden, he's 60-something years old and he's being persecuted for something like that. And he's been around thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people, and all of a sudden, he can be given 135 years for five out of 13 people saying a, a, a whole bunch of hearsay, as they told the Sister Farah, her testimony was hearsay. He's able to get 135 years for hearsay. I mean, it's like, this, this is really ridiculous, you know. And what I would like to say to those people is that, you know, it is, it's time to really stop the foolishness. I mean, come on, y'all. I know y'all. We all know who's who, who had, you know, their bad habits, whose genetic problems is not our fault, is not our, you know, issues. I mean, we don't have to worry about... If you have a problem because it's your family gene and you want to go link back up with your family, that is your business. You don't have to bring the whole community down because you want to meet your father or this person feels that they want to become an alcoholic. Or, I mean, if you don't like the guidelines of the community, what did people do when they didn't like the guidelines? They left. They left. I mean, so the reality is that you leave and then you look back, the, the grass isn't greener on the other side. All you have to do is come back home. You didn't have to destroy the whole, the whole organization. I mean, did you have to bring everybody down because you're unhappy? Okay, sure, you left, you're mad. You called back, we won't take your calls for a little while. It happens, I mean, if you leave home and your parents are mad at you. What happens? I've left home and my father was mad at me. Let me try to call him on the phone. He's like, click, uh, she can chill for a month. That's the reality. So just because you didn't get your phone calls answered or your mother couldn't get the power she would like or you couldn't buy the house of your dreams does not mean you have to destroy everybody's lives. We have children. You know, who thought about the fact that little children were going to get dragged around? And of the people that I've spoken to... Of, the, of those from that other side or their relatives or whomever that I've spoken to, the reality is that everybody's saying the same thing. We had no idea it was going to go that far. They told us they already had things in place. It was already set up. And the reality is that they were used. I mean, like, really, family, they were really, really used. You know what I'm saying? It's a reality. Anybody that's spoken to any of them knows that they were used. And now it's a reality of how we're going to undo this mess because it's so tangled. It has to be untangled detail by detail because it is just not right. I mean, how much is one person going to take? I mean, like, he already came and gave his whole life. You know what I'm saying? And in a reality sense, we've had to sacrifice as his family and accept that he is who he is and that he came to everybody, not just to us. I mean, how much is one person going to take? Now he has to sit for the rest of his life, or they want him to sit for the rest of his life, locked down in a prison? I mean, there's no logic in that, you know? And I just feel that you people, whoever is listening, I mean, set the record straight. You know what I'm saying? Us, there's a lot of misconceptions that's been said about us as a people. We've never hurt anybody. We've never coerced any of them. We've never stepped to anybody. I mean, all this so-called fear, all this so-called let's protect their names. When the indictment first came out, they had no names. They had them listed as, um, what, count one, count, whatever. I'm just saying, there was, there was, we've heard rumor that the indictment had no names to it. And it was supposedly be, it was supposedly for the protection of these individuals. But who are they protecting them from? Because the reality is that we are their family. Some of their parents are still here. Most of their brothers and sisters are still here. 
So how are you protecting you? How are you being protected? Like, look at the reality. How is someone going to protect you from your own family? And then at the end of the day, you're waiting for a check, and then they tell you, oh, guess what? You've got issues like the rest of your family. All of you have issues. You're now back on the same side with us because they see us all as the same. That's the, that is the truth. That is the bottom line because if they didn't see it that way, they would not tell you you need psychological help. That would not be the case. You know, so there we are. That's how I feel about it. Thank you so much, Sister Hager. And um, if, if we could, all our panelists who weren't on the first segment, could you introduce yourself before you speak so everyone knows who you are? I'm Fatima York. I'm uh, Malachi's New York's niece. Would you just like me to continue? Or you can continue on. Okay. I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of what my cousin was saying about uh, growing up in the community and making decisions to leave if you feel that there's something that is not doable for you, if you will. I mean, if you feel that there's a problem, and I'm just saying that because I use myself as an example. I was young, and I wanted to do, I would look outside and think, gosh, look at all that stuff going on out there. It really wasn't anything going on, but my life was so regimented and it was, and I didn't, I didn't get it then. I didn't get that I was trying, I was being taught to live a very simple life, a life that was not full of a lot of drama and clutter and all of that stuff. I didn't get that until I actually stepped out there on my own. When I was inside, oh my God, I was a little kid. I was like, wow, look at all the stuff they get to do, you know, and really those some of the very same people that, you know, cause, because at some point I did go out to public school. Some of the very same people that I went to public school with are now dead. Overdose, prostitution, crack, I mean, all of that. And those are all the things that I was shielded from. And I couldn't, you know, when you're, when you're young, you really don't get it because you really haven't had that experience. You know, and as, as my cousin was saying, we weren't exposed to certain things, but, so it seemed very interesting. You know, like, wow, that's interesting. I could do that, or I could, I could be a singer, which is what I thought I wanted to do until I got a chance to do it. And then I realized that it was really not all it was cracked up to be. Really, all they do is exploit you and put you through a lot of drama and rape you, really. But I'm just saying, you know, I was one of those people that was inside and being groomed to be a virtuous woman virtuous and you know they say you know you teach a child in the way that he should go and he'll never part from it and you know thanks to my uncle I am the woman that I am today and I'm, I'm very proud of me so um, and I didn't have to leave I didn't have to leave and make a scandal I had to actually, I actually had that conversation with myself, you know, one day, like, you know, you made this decision and it wasn't really right. How are you going to get back? And you know what? I just want to say to anybody that's out there that wants to come back, just come back. Just come back. Just come back because, you know, there are people that will welcome you with open arms. We've all made bad decisions. We've all made bad decisions in our lifetime. And you know what? however bad it may appear. And we realize that a lot of it was media hype. I mean, we all watch television, Superman and Batman and all that stuff. How real is that stuff? It's not, that, it's not real. Let's, really, let's face that. So they took this situation and made it look like it was just so huge. And it was more than what it really was. You know, what it was is a person disgruntled, I'm not happy about, and I want to get out there and do this, but in the interim, I'm going to take some things with me because I'm out here now.